Active Primary is an option that you can set when you are using Active Inspire. When you first come to the dashboard, which is more gray looking when you're in the standard Active Inspire Studio look and feel, there is the, the fifth tab down that says Configure. And in the very bottom right, there is a place that says Launch Next Time, and it will say using the primary look and feel if you're not already using Active Primary. This button will allow you to toggle back and forth between the intermediate version of the software that we call Studio and the primary version of the software, which we call Active Inspire Primary. It really is more of a user preference on whether or not you would like to uh, use the primary versus the studio version. If you go to view and dashboard, this will also pull up your dashboard in case you forget to set this when you first come into the software. Now the biggest difference between Active Inspire Studio and the primary is really the pen tool. Instead of having the pen, the highlighter, and the eraser in your main toolbar, it's now all along the bottom tray. So the far left tools will be, these are the three widths for the highlighter. The middle tools are your widths for the pen tool. And then the far right is your eraser. And you can pick your width of the eraser. And the highlighter will allow you to pick whatever color and so forth you would like. So the pen tools and the highlighter and the eraser all go on along the bottom tray so it's easy to reach for those who are vertically challenged. Um, another big difference is really going to be how your browsers operate. There is always the icon that looks like the music note in the clapboard, your lights, camera, and action. That's where your clip art, or as I call it, your flip art, will be. And a lot of people forget that right down here in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little tiny triangle that points up. If you click on that up triangle, you will see where you can expand uh, to take a look at different backgrounds and so forth. Simply click and pull them out. We can also come down to subjects and we can look at different images. So I can come down to mathematics and I can scroll down to find money. And I'll go to US dollar. Now in the primary version I can close out my browser if what I really want to do is just come down here and I can arrow over and arrow back to see more options within the primary um, resource browser. So then I can pull out all the different images I want and again I just arrow over to see more and arrow back to see uh, the previous screen. And you'll also have the page browser will appear if I add a couple of pages here. You'll start seeing them uh, fill up along the bottom. So my paint bucket will be a little bit separate as well. And you simply click on the paint bucket and then your palette appears on the bottom. And I'm filling up a couple of different pages here. So when I go back to my page browser, you can kind of see I've got a few different pages. And I can move this one over. So you can see my pages are aligning along the bottom. Your other browsers, you might be saying, how am I going to get to my property browser and um, you know my action browser, that kind of thing. If you go to view and then select browsers, your other browsers will appear. You still have the object browser. You still have the note browser, the property browser, action browser, and the uh, responder browser, which will allow you to export your results and so forth. So really, the biggest difference is just kind of the layout. Um, it tries to provide any student tools to go along the bottom, uh, so that way they're easy to reach, and it tries not to clutter up the main toolbar. But other than that, the software pretty much operates the same way.